a resident here in Midway, just live a couple of blocks away. Uh, I'm really happy to see all of you folks here tonight. Um, I think this would be a very informative and a very uh, helpful presentation for all of us. I understand we have uh, people here from a lot of different areas, there are Pennsylvania and some folks from West Virginia. So obviously this is an issue that's of importance to uh, all of us here and to a lot of us that are not here, that are in our areas and that may or may not even know that this is an issue. Um, what I'm going to do right now though is I'm going to do something a little bit unusual, but given the severity of the situation, folks, I'd like you guys to take a moment back and take some prayer with me. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to come here today to learn from Mayor Tillman about the experiences that they've had in DISH. We ask, Father, for your divine intervention in the situation. We know that this is beyond our human control. We know that we can fight through government channels, through protests, but at the end of the day, that this is in your hand. Father, we put our trust in you. We ask for your intervention. We ask for your deliverance from the situation. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Um, I would also like to, uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Ron Gola, who actually was key in bringing uh, Mayor Tillman here to us today. Uh, Ron Gola is a farmer over in Hickory. Now I've, I've lost him. I don't see. There he is. Look at that. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, Ron actually uh, was very instrumental in being Mayor Tillman here uh, to speak with us today. Uh, Ron, as some of you may know, has been battling the situation down there pretty much on his own for about five years. And um, he has gone to bat for a lot of residents in the area and has consistently gone out to try to tell people in other areas what he has experienced so that they can avoid some of the some of the hellishness that he's gone through. So Ron, I want to uh, acknowledge everything that you've done, both this year, both in your own work and also bringing Mary Tillman here to us today. Thank you. Um, so at this point. Network. I don't know if anybody remembers hearing about that. 
That's where the name dish comes from, and that's why it's all capitalized. Yes, that was part of the contract. So uh, this was pretty big for Dish Network as well, because that brought the media coverage incredible when we're after release the iPod. But the annual budget was around seventy thousand uh, dollars. We are located in the middle of the Barnett Shale, and we are about fifteen miles from the very first well that was fractured using the slip water fracturing technology that is now being used in all the shale plays. Uh, we're in the middle of the Barnett Shale, which is really very, very small in comparison to the Marcella Shale. Uh, but for the past several years, it's been one of the most active uh, natural gas shales. Uh, the group, the Perrigan Group, is an economic group that is uh, funded by the industry. But they speculated that the Barnett Shale added eight to $2 billion to the Texas economy uh, annually and accounted for 100,000 jobs. This was a couple of years ago when gas prices were, were elevated. Uh, I'm not sure. You guys have quite a bit of activity around here, so you may know some of this stuff. This is just kind of an overview from the process. Uh, it's not just the well, but the whole process that this has to go to before it gets to the, to the kitchen stove. And so this just kind of outlines that process. Goes through treatment, goes through the compressor station, gets sent to the distributor. So since we're in the middle of the Barnett Shale, we have some wells that are, that are in the town, just like you guys have. But we're also on one of the popular pipeline, pipeline routes coming out of the Barnett Shale. So just about all of the gas uh, from the city of Fort Worth down to that portion of the shale comes through Dish at some point or another uh, on the pipeline. So we have 11 pipelines that converge on our, our little town. Uh, five companies installed 11 natural gas compressors and the associated and treated facilities that go with that. We have four metering stations. We have 18 wells inside of our corporate limits and plus 50 wells just outside of our corporate limits. So if you look at all of this, we, we have a great aspect of the natural gas producing uh, process. We drill the wells, we have the pipelines, we have gathering lines, we have treatment. There's actually an odorizer at the metering station. The gas gets metered, it gets compressed. So when it leaves dishes, it's ready for your kitchen stove. So this is our compressor. And it started in 2005. Started with these over here. You can see those are already covered. The town of Dish property line kind of goes like this. So they were built literally feet outside of our corporate limits, so they wouldn't have to comply with with the uh, ordinances of the town. As they moved, as they moved in, they actually moved back into the town. And so as they go from from your right to left. You can see they start getting enclosed, they start looking a little nicer, they're painted, there's some bushes around some of them. So, that in behind there is dish. Dish is in behind there. So that's probably, uh, probably close to a half a mile across there. Now each of these companies are independently permitted. They're permitted under permit by rule. So under a permit by rule, all you have to do is fill out an application, send it in, declare that you, you don't reach a certain emissions threshold, and then you get a permit back requirement. So if, if they were considered the same site, which you see the site essentially they are, they would have to go through a much more extensive permitting process, public participation, things like that. However, none of these companies have to do with that. Companies are Enbridge, Energy Transfer, Atmos, Chesapeake, Crosstex. This is what's on the sites. This is also uh, one of the sites we're permitted. Um, see there's some, some dehydrators, oxidizers, um, amine units, reboilers. So that's the process and stuff. There's a photo of exhaust off of the uh, dehydration. So, some of you live around these things, you know the first thing that you notice when they come to town is the noise. These things can be extremely noisy. And so, as you 
seen in the, the earlier picture 